Yeah, howdy y'all. Here's a handy redneck coming at you. Uh, figured we'd sit and do some talking. As you can see, I got my heathen dogs here with me. Uh, it's a nice day out. Uh, they're out to play. But, um, y'all, some of y'all may have watched my video last time where we was out planting seeds in the rain and everything. Uh, but we're, we're, we're going to discuss uh, some, uh, some signs of nature as to when's a good time to plant. And we're going to start with uh, some trees. This here tree right here is an apple tree we started from seed many years ago um, it was one of the hang on Achoo! Woo! neighbors burning leaves got some smoke up my nose anyway this here apple tree was one of the last trees to go to sleep this past fall. And uh, it, it's starting to wake up. Uh, if you look careful, you can see it's starting, getting ready to bud out. And that's a good indicator, but there are better indicators because apple is uh, notorious for budding out, flowering out, and then it getting cold and you get no crop. Next on the list we got this here tree. This is a, a, a fairly large leaved tree um, but it's not not so much tree as scrub, brush, whatnot. Uh, this is a American Buckeye. As you can see it's got some pretty big buds on it getting ready to pop too but the trees you want to really be interested in when it comes to whether or not it's getting ready to be time to plant out and everything are some of your hardwoods like this here tree right here this is a hickory tree and uh, if you look at it, it's got some pretty nice buds on it, too. So the hickories are budding out. It's hard to tell, but this here oak, it's hard to tell, but if you look close, uh, you can probably see some little buds on its branches, too, as it gets ready to bud out. And the hardwoods are a real good indicator as to when it's a, about to be time to get everything planted out. Because generally speaking, a hardwood tree, uh, they know better than anything else uh, as to when it's going to be warm. Uh, they don't like to... Uh, expend a lot of energy with leaves and stuff if they have to do it multiple times so if you're wondering if it's time to plant outdoors well have you a look at your hardwood trees and you find out that being said uh, we got our beds out uh, some of them like I say you saw saw me planting seeds about a week or two ago in the rain well it's it's cold still so the, the the beds are warming up those seeds haven't really germinated yet not to worry nature knows what she's doing she'll take care of it but with that I figured, well, why don't we have us a look at just what I'm planting in those beds? Because, well, 
uh, it's always good to have a, a, a game plan and draw it out if you can and that's that's what's in this book here is what I draw done drawed out and uh, we'll have us look see as soon as I get this tripod figured out a bit we'll have us look see into that book and at at where I'm planting stuff hey y'all get at that now here So what I got here is some graph paper and that way I can figure out how big things are. Uh, this is what I'm calling my G1 garden bed. Uh, that, and as you can see, I got me a nice little chart here of what goes where and how it's going to line up in that bed. Uh, we already done planted cabbages. We're going to plant soon uh, these tomatoes and onions. Uh, and then later on we'll get a couple of sweet potatoes and some peppers and celery in there. Well, that's one uh, three foot by eight foot bed. So that's how that one is. Next up, we got what we call the G2 garden. This one has the the big row of carrots uh, and the turnips in it. Well, we also going to have us some kale, Brussels sprouts quinoa and amaranth in there uh, this is some of the tall amaranth uh, that we're growing primarily for seed this year then we move on to the G3 garden well G3 garden like G1 and G2 is three foot by eight foot uh, it's got uh, gold beets and uh, um, cylindra beets we're going to have some amaranth up here some butternut squash uh, some more celery uh, we're going to get some atomic grape tomatoes in here uh, get us some okra going and probably a little stand of buckwheat you know uh, it's just me that I'm primarily feeding, but this this garden should produce enough for at least two people for uh, the majority of a year. Uh, so, especially with succession planting. Then we move on to the G5 garden. It's two foot by five foot, and this is going to be our three sisters' garden. We're going to have corn beans and zucchini planted in here so that's that's how that's gonna be you know i'm gonna try to keep this uh relatively quick because i know y'all ain't too interested in hearing me talk about everything and anything but one of the things is if you don't talk, you don't learn. Because if no one's talking, then no one's listening. So uh, we, we do a little bit of talking. Hopefully not mess you up too much. Uh, I'll let you sit here and watch it, watch it, watch shovel. He's, he's sitting there soaking up some sunshine, so... Um, I'm going to pretty much end this video right quick. Uh, here in a couple of days, 
I'll be getting out and doing some more planting and I'll make a video of it and so y'all can see and uh, uh, we gonna be doing tomatoes here pretty soon because with these uh, raised beds they're easily easy to cover and uncover with plastic so you, you know we can get us a, a, a month or even two months head start on our high heat crops like tomatoes and whatnot because they'll really love it and considering my tomatoes are starting to get a little bit leggy uh, I need to do something with them so we might as well put them out here anyway this here's a handy redneck I uh, I'll see y'all later. Y'all be careful now. Here.